Hey everyone, this is Brian from Vance and Hines, and thanks for joining me on another Fuel Pack Friday. Let's go ahead and wait a second here, get our Instagram friends connected. Perfect. All right, guys. Uh, so Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, we're live everywhere now. So thank you guys for joining me on another Fuel Pack Friday here on whatever platform you have to be streaming on. Uh, my name is Brian, and we'll go ahead and get your guys' answers or questions answered. So I've got a list from everything that was sent through the Instagram stories earlier this morning. And we'll sort of get the ball rolling. Let me tilt this down so you're not staring at something. <laughs> All right. So number one, someone asked, uh, where can I get the Vance & Hines Roland Sands pipe for my Indian Scott Bobber? Uh, that system is currently discontinued. It is no longer in production. It hasn't been in production probably north of a year at this point. And so right now, I think the only place you're likely going to find it is if you find it secondhand or used somewhere like, um, you know, OfferUp, Craigslist, uh, next door, Facebook Marketplace, that kind of thing. Or if you manage to find a good morning, good morning, new old stock version on, say, eBay. Typically with discontinued items, that's usually what I recommend is trying to track them down used or trying to find them like new old stock NOS parts. Uh, and again, typically eBay or your local uh, market is really a good place to find that kind of stuff. Um, I know for my 04 Super Glide, I had to go that route for my Pro Pipe HS. Because unfortunately, we don't make the ProPipe HS anymore, just the ProPipe Chrome. And the ProPipe Chrome isn't compatible with my 04. So I did manage to track one down. It was new, new looking at least. Uh, and it sounds great. Once again, powered by coffee. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and throw them out. We'll keep the ball rolling as long as you guys are asking questions. I'm going to go cruise over to Instagram here, see what we've got rolling. Good afternoon from Connecticut. Good morning from Zocal. It looks like we're caught up there. All right, so we'll jump back to the questions. Again, if you guys have anything you would like to ask, throw it out there, and I'll go ahead and uh, answer away. Uh, Hazy Hog on Instagram says, the Torquid 450 slip-ons are arriving today. That's awesome. Always a good day when you get new bike parts. Uh, I just threw a set of bags on my Dyna, and it's always fun, no matter what you're getting put on your bike. So cool, exciting day for you. I'm sure you'll enjoy those torquers. Uh, William B from YouTube says, just wondering whether we'll be adding the SE 517 cam to the FP3. This is the cam that comes in the Softail 131 upgrade kit. I think that we will potentially, William, be adding that cam. We just haven't had any chance to look at it here in the dyno. And because it's not a, a typically used cam outside of the 131 kit, um, it may not find its way into the app. That being said, it's likely going to find its way onto our, wow, my head is way high here. It's likely going to find itself onto our internal server, our uh, database, or that. Um, so basically what ends up happening is all of the maps that we create here, the stuff that I do in the dyno, for the most part, we don't put it in the app. Um, anything that has to do with big bore kits or cams or anything of the sort, I typically go ahead and keep it in a Google Doc and then share it with our customer support team. So they've got access to maps for like 124-inch motors, 128s, uh, 143s, uh, 475Z cams, RS-468 cams, etc. So if we have a camshaft map or big bore kit or something that I've done here in the dyno, it's going to be on an internal chart, not necessarily on the app. So more than likely that 517, if it's sole use, uh, and I'd have to dig on this one, I'm not sure, if that's sole use for that cam, for this 517 is for the 131 upgrade kit, again, solely for the soft tail, then it's probably not going to find its way in the app, but it could very well find itself on our servers so that we can share the file with you. That being said, we don't have any 131 tunes right now. We have one base tune, and I'm pretty much only sending it to people who have a Fuel Pack Pro wideband tuning kit because it is a very, very rough base because we haven't had a chance to map a 131 outside of the King of the Baggers race bike. Um, we do have a separate 131 that's in more of a streetable condition that we're working on mapping. But again, that's all being done at the Racing Development Center. And those guys are kind of focused on the NHRA season, which is currently going right now. So I'm not sure when they'll get those maps done, hopefully soon, but I understand they are, they're racing. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. So thank you, William. Good question. Uh, bounce back over to Instagram. How's it going? It's good, dude. Uh, what bags? I installed a set of uh, Thrasher, Thrash & Co. escape bags on my Dyna. Hola, buenos dias, good morning. Uh, hey, is there any difference in performance when using quiet baffles versus stock baffles? For example, on a big radius two to two. Yeah, so the quiet baffle generally is gonna have more bottom end torque. You'll lose a little bit of the top end power, whereas standard will have less bottom end torque, but more top end power. Standard is kind of the, the best of both worlds between like a no baffle or a competition baffle and a quiet baffle. So on the high end of the spectrum, you basically have 
uh, a quiet baffle where it makes uh, a lot of low end grunt. It's not as loud and you sort of lose out of the top end because of that restriction. Whereas with a standard baffle or a competition baffle, depending or no baffle, if you yank them out, you sort of get the inverse effect. So you basically would have um, high, high top end, low bottom end for no baffle that incrementally goes up with the standard or competition baffle. And then quiet baffle would be the other end where you get a lot of lower end torque, but you sort of lose that top end. So there is a little bit of a performance difference between the multiple baffles. It's not huge, um, but it's definitely perceptive if you're riding around on the bike. Thanks, FXDF. Uh, see one from Facebook over here, Ken Turman says he's got a Screaming Eagle High Flow Air Cleaner Kit. He just upgraded to a Pro Pipe on his 08 Fat Bob. Should I upgrade the air cleaner and have also got an FP3 tuner? So if you have a Screaming Eagle High Flow Air Cleaner Kit and it's the whole High Flow, it's not necessary. Um, you can if you want to change the look of it. So if you want to go for something that just has a little bit more flash to it, then you could change it to something like our Blade or X or Rogue or Cage Fighter. However, if you're looking at it from just like a performance standpoint, they're going to be pretty much on par with each other. You might get a little bit more flow out of the air cleaners I just listed, the, the Blade, the X, the Rogue, and the uh, Cage Fighter, just because they have that additional surface area for filtration. But the volumetric efficiency tables aren't going to be different. And the amount of power you would gain out of it would be very limited from a like dollar per horsepower standpoint. Um, were it me, and I already had that high flow air cleaner, personally, I'd probably just leave it. Um, but if you want to upgrade it because you want the, the look of something new or, or something just better looking than like a stock cover on a high flow, then yeah, I'd look at other options. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, Bullet XR, excited for his new high output two in one. Dude, I rode that thing on the Fat Bob to the beach when we did that photo shoot and it is nice. Um, really smooth, linear power. Sorry, my beard's all because of the masks. Um, really, really nice, smooth, linear power delivery. Uh, good amount of bottom end torque. Really nice pipe. I really, really like that pipe. Uh, any recent updates on the FP3 timetable for 2021? Still a summer release, question mark. Right now, we're not really giving any ETA information on that. Just know that myself and the electronics team are working insanely hard on that thing. Uh, it's pretty much our chief focus all day, every day. So right now, because of my kids' distance learning, I'm in the shop Wednesdays and Fridays. And so Wednesdays and Fridays, I'm either doing this kind of stuff with you guys, or I'm in a couple meetings, or I'm helping out electronics. So right now, if I have downtime, it's straight up electronics focused, um, predominantly FP3. And those guys are crushing at it like all day, every day. Uh, and I usually get a pretty good update um, on our, our weekly electronics meetings. So I know they're making good headway. Uh, I'm excited to, you know, pop in and get my hands on some stuff later today, hopefully. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I have no ETA. It's it's coming. And the sooner we get it out, uh, the better I'll feel about it. Because uh, I know you guys are anxious to have it, and I know we're anxious to get it out to you. Uh, Mr. King Kraus says, what's my favorite cam? 04 to 20 Sporties. Does the cam affect the sound of the bike? The cam will affect the sound of the bike a little bit. Just that increased lobe and duration does make a tiny bit of difference. Um, it depends on the application. So if you're looking at just like a stock bike, if you're seeing to throw them in at 1200, I like the Andrews N4. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty good cam. Uh, fueling makes a nice one. I want to say the 505. Um, SNS has a couple good options. I've always liked the Andrews grinds. Uh, I had a set of Andrews N6s in my old 03 Buell powered Sportster, and that thing was really, really awesome. Um, but the N4s are a better bolt-in option for most people. Uh, lower end torque, not as much top end. You don't have to have quite the head work that is needed to support something like an Andrews N6. So I think it depends on the application. But for the most part, if you're just talking about like a stock Sportster, uh, for me, it's Andrews N4. All right, pounce over here. Uh, Nick underscore MC underscore FXLRS. Hey, from the UK, will slip ons be available for the European market for the 2021 Harleys? Extra O2 sensors cause problems. Yeah, Euro 5 is not uh, friendly. So right now, we're currently working with a shop in the UK to hopefully bring you guys some slip-ons. Um, they're working with us and engineering to see what can be done. And I don't have any tea on that stuff either, unfortunately. Just know that we do have a team. We've made partners with the dealer in the UK and uh, we'll be working on bringing that to you guys shortly. Uh, patiently waiting on back order from Drag, the stainless steel one. Yeah, those sold real fast. Um, I think as soon as we announced them, you guys pretty much bought them all out. <laughs> Uh, can you make a two to one pro pipe for M8 in stainless steel? 
I would love that. Oof, ice. Um, let me talk to Tom, our product development manager. The issue with doing something like a stainless steel pro pipe or kind of like our old version of the high output stainless um, is that it's really costly. It ends up being like a like a $2,000 exhaust system for a soft tail or for a bagger. So really, really costly. Um, we can poke around and look at the business side of it and see if it makes you know viable sense to do. And I'll talk to Tom about it and see if that's something they've been looking at. But for right now, I don't believe there are any plans in the work for something like that. Just know that were we to make it, it would be a very expensive, very, very expensive system. Uh, how do I know when my auto-tune map is optimal and can I finish my auto-tuning, asks William B. So a couple of things. Um, one, we added a preview tool into the Fuel Pack FP3 designed specifically originally for the Fuel Pack Pro. Um, the idea being that if you can look at your volumetric efficiency delta tables, you can see the gradations and the degrees of change that are happening run to run. And then once you kind of get to a point where it's not making any more changes, once it's sort of polished, and the whole map is green within those VE delta tables, and you don't have to do any more auto-tune sessions. So it's a really nice way to kind of take a look at it and gauge, like, do I need more of a mapping? Do I need less mapping? In what specific areas am I pulling out a lot of fuel or adding a ton of fuel? And you can kind of focus in on those zones. So utilize in the auto-tune menu that preview button in the lower right-hand corner. It will help an absolute ton. I do have in the app, a, uh, I don't have my phone because it's running Instagram. Um, in the app, if you go to the customer support menu down at the bottom, you can press on VNH customer support and then select videos. I think I rearranged it this week when I uploaded an on-road auto uh, on road auto tune tutorial that I did about a year ago because I found out I didn't put it on YouTube. I had it on Instagram TV, but not on YouTube. So I uploaded it to YouTube this week. You can find it on YouTube under the FP3 playlist uh, from the Vance and Heinz channel, or you can go to the app, customer support, Vance and Heinz support videos. And I want to say it's one of the top five or six options. Um, it'll basically say, you know, how to connect, how to find your first map, how to flash a map. Um, top three questions I get regarding auto-tune, how to perform an auto-tune, and then uh, a brief rundown of those preview tables, the volumetric efficiency delta tables. So if you kind of watch those three videos in order, it should give you a really good idea as to kind of what you're in for. All right, Jhall89, kind of a stupid question. No, it's not, buddy. I've got an O3 Ultra VH pipes, but I don't know what kind I could take the baffles out to make it a little bit louder or no. The answer is you could take the baffle out of anything and make it louder, but is it going to run well? And the answer for the most part is not really. Um, if you want to pull the baffle out of something like a monster round or an OS450, which is a quieter muffler, it's going to sound a bit like a hollow tugboat, kind of a bop, 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 bop kind of noise. So I don't tend to recommend it, and then you're going to lose a lot of bottom end torque in doing so. What I would recommend, however, if you don't like the sound of your particular muffler, is just replace the mufflers. Um, don't take the baffle out. Take them off. Sell them to somebody else. Get what you want. If you're looking for loud um, and you're on an O3, you can look at either the Torker 450s, which we now have for the twin cams. You can look at the Illuminator 400s or the twin slash rounds. Those are going to be your best bets. Uh, Bull FXR says, will we have a new map ready for the FP3 when he has that new 2 one stainless? Yes. So part of what we do here is we make sure that before those are out the door in full production, that we have maps available on our server before they even ship to you guys. All right. Alan Olveson on uh, YouTube asks, I'm running an FP3 on my 08 Road King with a 103 kit, 255 Screaming Eagle cam, two to two pipes, and a head pipe. Want to go to a venting crankcase to atmosphere? Do I have to retune? Nope. Don't worry about it. Um, if you go ahead and have like an external crankcase breather rather than an internal one that is built into your air cleaner, so that way all of that excess oil and fumes gets dumped into like a catch can rather than going back through your induction modules through your combustion chamber and out the pipe, um, it doesn't really change the fueling strategy all that much. You could potentially run an auto-tune session, but the reality is that it's such a minimal amount already that the oxygen sensors are going to account for it. I wouldn't stress about it. If it were me doing it on my bike, I wouldn't remap because I don't see the point. So, Alan, don't worry about it. You're good to go. Let me go ahead and bounce this back over here. Uh, <laughs> come here often? Ask Stump Trump. Yeah, buddy, I do quite quite often. All right, next question. Uh, for a M8 Fat Bob 114, difference between 2 to one upsweep and 2 to one high output. Um, aesthetics, really. They both make really good power. They both sound cool. I actually prefer the sound a little bit on the high output compared to the upsweep stainless. 
Um, but again, sound is subjective. So what I like, you may not like and vice versa. Um, but I really, really do like that new two to one high output. Um, the upsweep is really nice. My problem is, is I usually like having saddlebags on the bike. So the upsweep at a certain point doesn't work for me, which is why I have a pro pipe. But if I had a newer M8 Softail, I would be looking either at a pro pipe or this stainless two to one uh, high output. But they're both really good. Nice power delivery. I, I'd be happy with either of them. Uh, Danny on YouTube says, I got a Cobra two to one exhaust and an Arlen Ness big sucker. What's the best FP3 tuning setting? Should I do auto tune for the Cobra two to one exhaust? Depending on whether it is a, ah, <laughs> whether it is a short or a long exhaust, two things. Um, one, you can go to our generic map section. If you're not sure, we do have generic maps for a two to one long and two to one short in that area. So if you go under manufacturer, check generic, go find those two to ones. Uh, if it's something that's more akin to a pro pipe, a longer two in one, you can just use a pro pipe map. Uh, nine times out of 10, people aren't going to have the same type of baffle complexity that we're going to have. So I would run with the competition uh, baffle map on the pro pipe, something just wide open mechanical, um, no packing, no multi chamber, that kind of stuff. So I would run competition baffle pro pipe if it's something shorter, that depending on the bike, it would be either like a competition two to one or a stainless two to one, one of those shorter two to ones that we offer. Uh, 19 FLHD. Yeah, dude, I go pro pipe. If you're looking at something really short, um, Python razor two to one would be the map that I would run with. Uh, all right. Bounce over to Instagram. Hello. 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 Indonesia, Brazil, Italy. Ooh, awesome. Good morning guys. Good afternoon. Alrighty. Some randomly dropping F bombs that I didn't see. Who knows? <laughs> uh, Diego Bona, we already got you there, buddy. Sorry, fam, jumped on late. Do you recommend getting a Pro Tune even after getting the downloaded? For most people, it's probably not necessary. Uh, unless you're looking at something, uh, Harley Fat Boy underscore Jr., that happens to be like really out there. Um, as far as like, like a big motor ported polished heads, bump compression, big cam, that kind of stuff. You really don't need to take it to a dyno. Um, for generic or standard like stage one applications, the FP3 is fine. If you need help getting that camshaft tuned in, contact our support staff of um, uh, helpadvanceandhines.com or you can call us on the phone Monday through Friday, nine, uh, eight to five Pacific Standard Time. Uh, the other option is to talk to us on live chat, same hours, and then we can go ahead and get you a map for those camshafts. But unless you were doing big motor build, uh, I wouldn't stress about taking it to a tuner or or you just get an FP Pro, Fuel Pack Pro, and just ride it around and auto-tune with that thing, and it'd be about the same. Uh, Lino, who's this right now, Junior says, we're removing the baffles from the 06 Dyna Street Pop, affect the engine. Um, yes and no. So it will change the dynamics of the exhaust, and if you don't remap for that, you could potentially, over time, have it be a little too lean. Is it going to be so lean that it's going to cause damage, potentially? Probably not. Um, can it be, though? Yeah, so I think if you have on an 06 Dyna uh, a fuel pack LED, then I would recommend going to fuelpackphi.com. Find new values for that. The difference between a standard baffle and a no baffle map is pretty minimal. So if you wanted to pull the baffles, go for it. It's likely not going to affect anything. Just if you do and you have the access to a proper map, make sure you have the proper map. Uh, Holt J19881 says, What do I think of the NHRA Pro Stock bike? I think it's awesome. Can't wait to see it in person. And uh, I'm hoping that this season makes it all the way to Pomona so that way I can take the kids. It'll be a good time. Someone's being a spammer. Go figure. Uh, do I know about Jekyll and Hyde exhaust? Yes, I do. Is VH going to come out with something similar? We've kicked around the idea. So, Jekyll and Hyde, for those of you who don't know, is an exhaust that has a how do I put this a solenoid actuated butterfly valve. So basically, it's an exhaust that's normally wide open, but there's a butterfly valve. You push a button on the handlebars, and the butterfly valve opens and closes as need be. The idea being that your bike can either be loud or quiet depending on the direction of the butterfly valve within the exhaust. Now it has a box that goes under your seat with a separate wire that goes up your handlebars and you can push a button 
a couple different ways. You can have it all the way open, all the way closed. You can have it where it changes based upon speed. So if you go over a certain speed, it goes wide open. When you go below a certain speed, it closes. The idea being that if you are in Europe and you're cruising through a town, you slow down to get through town, it will close the valve to keep you within noise ordinance levels. And then as soon as you get out and you hit the road, it opens back up and it sounds like a bike again. So the idea is a really cool one. Um, we had a set here. We kicked around the idea of doing it. We were actually looking at doing it where instead of having a wired controller, it would be through Bluetooth, uh, either through an app or through a secondary button you can install somewhere. Uh, but the reality is it ended up being like really, really costly, really costly um, to the point where we felt that we would be a little bit behind or if we were basically taking something like a Jack and Hyde product and improving upon it, it would be a very, very expensive product. It would be a multi-year project in and of itself. And then things like this new Euro 5 that just happened to come out would have derailed it. So I don't believe we have anything. We looked at it, but there's nothing going to be in the works from us in a Jack and Hyde type system. But that being said, I have played with them on the road and uh, really cool. I do like them a lot. Uh, Daryl from YouTube says, will Vance Hines ever offer the option of purchasing extra licenses to use the FP3 on multiple bikes like a PV? Uh, at this particular point in time, I know it's come up in an awful lot of meetings, but right now we don't have any plans to come out with any form of licensing. Um, right now, the FP3 is still one of the cheaper tuners, and as far as what you get for the unit, it's probably the best bang for your buck. Um, use everything for your phone, not having to buy an external monitor, mount it to your bars, figure out what you're going to do with it, et cetera. So right now, there's no plans to make a licensing type system um, because they're pretty cheap and you can just get a new one for the new bike. Uh, Yubahuma, how are you? Okay, dude. JH are really costly too. Yes, those Jekyll and Hyde's are not cheap. I think when we bought one to play around with it, it was, God, it was like 1400 1500 bucks for a pair of mufflers. Um, again, part of the problem. <laughs> I mean, Go to uh, Shasti here on YouTube, and I'm going to bounce back to the questions you guys asked on the Instagram stories. Uh, what's the best header and muffler system I'd recommend for a CVO 117 motor? That's pretty easy. Um, two schools of thought. One, if you want to keep the two to one to two, if you want to have that rear aesthetic look be symmetrical, and you're like dead set on that, then power duels and torquer 450s or high outputs. Torquer 450s if you want sound. High outputs if you want a little bit more performance and you want to have it be quieter idle and quieter while cruising. I really kind of go back and forth between the two because I don't really have any issues with it droning in like a full face helmet. Um, but if you're like an open face helmet kind of guy or you don't wear a helmet at all, you know, having to live with that kind of sound, depending on what you choose for umpteen hours a day. Um, like I said, it's a personal preference. It's a subjective thing. So those would be the two muffers I'd look at. So the Sorker 450s are the high outputs. Absolutely go with the power duels header. Don't go with the dresser duels. You'll lose bottom end torque out of it and you kind of kill the scavenging effect. So I don't prefer the dresser duels. I prefer the power duels all day long. Um, they're a little bit more, but I think the bang you get uh, for performance wise is much more worth it. And then if you're really willing to not have the two into two thing or the two to one to two thing, then get a pro pipe. Um, best bang for the buck we offer, more performance, uh, lighter weight cheaper than buying mufflers in a head pipe. So if you're cool with not having some symmetry out the back and you can live with that little like divot hole under your left saddle bag, uh, pro pipe all day long. Uh, let's see, Harley Spirit 66 says, do we offer a refurb service for a scuffed two and a two big radius? We don't, we don't offer a refurb service. Um, that being said, I have seen people take their own heat shields off and just get them powder coated at a local coater. Uh, it is a black ceramic powder coating. So pretty much any powder coater near you will be able to do that. Um, and then you basically just drill out the rivets for the badging and we can send you new rivets. Um, so if you contact us at helpadvancedhines.com, we can send you the rivets you need to refurb, reattach the badging. You can get them coded yourself. The other option is you can contact the same people at helpadvancedhines.com. Uh, again, available Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 Pacific Standard Time, online or on the phone. And you can go ahead and just order a new set of heat shields. We do offer replacement parts. So just go ahead and order a new set. That'd be the alternative. Uh, YouTube, any chance on VH for Triumph 2500 Rocket 3? Nothing good on the market. Uh, I don't know. 
not too familiar with that bike personally. Uh, I'll talk to, again, my product development manager, Tom, about it and see if that is something we're looking at doing. Because right now, I don't know if there's any plans for, for that bike there, Romulo. All right. Uh, we'll be producing the big radius for the Yamaha XVS 950. Again, I don't think there's any plans for that one. So as far as I know, not at this time. Just we were 28. So he's got Cobra 909 Speedster Shorts, Screaming Eagle High Flow Intake, FP3. Works great. Awesome. Thank you, buddy. Uh, curious what degree you have. Good delivery always. Personally, I have a music degree. <laughs> um, I can go into it a little bit. Long and short is uh, I went to college at Arizona State University for a year as an architecture major, and I hated it. It was awful. Architecture was not for me. Funnily enough, I married an interior architect. Um, a whole other story. But I ended up buying at that time. I had a 71 Bronco. And as much as I loved that old truck, it kept breaking down on me and I kept fixing it and fixing it and fixing it and fixing it. And it was costing me a fortune as a broke college student who could only afford like 150 bucks a month to eat. So I got rid of the truck and I got a little Honda Shadow and I got really into having my motorcycle. I think I was 19 at the time. And I thought about, well, why can't I combine working on cars, which I love doing and working on my bike and bikes. So I left ASU and I went to Motorcycle Mechanics Institute in Phoenix and I did that. And then I went up to NAU uh, where I met my wife, moved back here. And then I ended up getting a music degree, uh, music industry studies from uh, Northridge. And yeah, long and short, I don't really use that degree. <laughs> I've, I've worked at a ton of dealerships and Eagle Rider and I was a tech for many, many years. And then from a tech turned into a service advisor, into an assistant service manager, into a service manager at a couple locations. And then I was hired on here as our testing department manager for engineering and R&D. And now I work for marketing, getting to chat to you guys on Fridays, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I have a music degree. I play saxophone pretty well, <laughs> and piano, and guitar, and bass, and clarinet, and a little bit of flute, not so much on those. Saxophone primarily, and then guitar, then piano. Uh, how's production of the Rebel 1100 pipes coming along? Uh, coming along pretty good, I think. I don't know. Um, you can contact me if you need to. Uh, email me at fppro.advancedhines.com. I'll talk to Rob, one of the guys in uh, sales and manufacturing, and I can find out when those were last through the shop. And hopefully, if I know when that happened, I can figure out when they'll be getting to you. Any chance B&H will have a dummy pipe? Nope. We don't do dummy pipes. Um, there's a phrase I could use that Terry once said, um, but I can't say it because I'm on live camera right now. Um, but the long and short is a dummy pipe is a dummy pipe, right? Like we're a company that was born from racing. We are steeped in racing and a dummy pipe is added weight for no benefit whatsoever. So we will never, ever, 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 as far as I understand, have a dummy pipe. Um, has production got that one? We make leathers for bikers. Nope, we're cool. Wait, do customizations for clubs? Oh, that's cool, dude. I was a sun devil for a year. Uh, born and raised, not raised, I was born here in LA, but I was raised in Phoenix. Uh, let's see. Then I had a bunch of friends from high school go to U of A, then I went to ASU. And all right, so I've got a 2018 Heritage Softail Classic. That's 115.hd1. Do I need to retune if I put on Big Shot 17941 or slip on Eliminator 316716? The answer is both. You will have to remap for both. Swapping out the mufflers on that particular bike on an 18 Heritage Softail Classic removes the catalytic converters, which are built into the mufflers on the newer bike. So as soon as you put a slip on on, the cat is gone. The changes in the exhaust have been so drastic that you now have to remap. Um, same would also be true for putting on something like a big shot staggered. So at that point, you pretty much just have to remap no matter what. Pick your poison, which exhaust you prefer. Um, between those two, depending on what you're doing, I personally, on a soft tail classic, really like the slip ons better. And that's just because the mufflers will end past my bags, whereas the big shots staggered and sort of mid bag which for me is kind of a funky look. I would like to see them go all the way back. So on that bike, I'd recommend either the Pro Pipe or the Slip-Ons. Uh, Illuminator 300s between the Slip-Ons would definitely be the ones that I would pick. 
with my bike being an 03 and having vnh pipes do you think it would have something like a fuel pack or not necessarily i just got the bike so i don't know uh what i've got in it so j hall underscore 89 potentially yeah right so on an 03 there are a few options we had the fuel pack led and the easiest way to do that is going to be to pull your side cover and see if there's a fuel pack unit that is plugged in between the ECU and the main wiring harness. So you'll have ECU wiring harness and an R system plugged in the middle. If it's not there, then you don't have one of ours. Um, there's a couple other manufacturers who also offer tuners for those bikes that are gonna be plugged into the same spot. Outside of that, take a look and see if anyone has changed something like an XIEDs, which is basically like a tool that fools the ECU to dump more fuel. Um, those are pretty inexpensive. They don't work all that well. Uh, the other alternative is it could have a native flash in the ECU from Harley Davidson. The only way to tell if that were the case would be to take it to a dealer, have them plug a DT2 into it and see if it picks up. Now, that being said, I can't remember if a DT2 will even plug into an O3. They might need to have to break out the scanalyzer, which I haven't used in forever, but the scanalyzer was kind of cool. They had these little cards. It was almost like a, like a handheld Nintendo or an Atari. <laughs> So all the tunes were on these little cards. You'd have to like plug the cards into this giant friggin' push button tool. Um, I haven't used one of those in forever. Uh, probably since like 05, 06. Um, but that being said, they still exist. They're probably still at a couple dealers here and there. Um, and they should be able to hopefully plug it in your bike and get information as far as the calibration ID is concerned. And then hopefully they can take a look at the calibration ID and verify it's either stock or at least like stage one for your bike. So that would be the thing. Check and make sure that nothing is physically plugged into the ECU and the main wiring harness. That that's um, intersection there, and then take it to a dealer, see if they can uh, find out what's in the ECU if that's what it's got. Uh, Parfum says, "Would you like to speak slowly?" Uh, no, I drink a ton of coffee, and I'm bipolar, so I'm apparently having a manic day, and I'm going to speak quickly. And for that, I am sorry. Uh, Soft Taylor Bagger. Dude, um, I don't know. I don't know. There are things I like about both. I think in a perfect world, I'd have both. Um, right now, I have a Super Glide. I love middleweight bikes. I did many, many, many years, my wife and I on Sportsters, and we would do like 1,400 mile weekends, 2 up on an XL, and that was horrible. It was fun. I mean, we just didn't know how horrible it was until we bought a Dyna. And once we bought the Dyna, that's been like so much better. So right now the Dyna, for the most part, like it lives its life as just a normal SoCal club style bike. Uh, when the wife gets on it, then I throw on the passenger backrest, the detachable, and then a big wide touring seat. And we can go out for weekends on the thing. Um, works really well. I think the bagger for me personally is less useful just because I live in Los Angeles and traffic here sucks. And particularly traffic between my home and Vance and Hines is awful, particularly going home. So I typically travel down the 10 and the five, which are really bad for traffic. Not as bad as like the 91 or the Sepulveda Pass, which I have ridden on bikes before in the past, because when I commuted from the Valley to the West Side, that really was awful. Um, but I end up driving through downtown LA pretty much every day and doing that on a bagger when I've had company baggers and taken them home and done like mileage accumulation or for like break-in purposes, stuff like that. I just don't like lane splitting on a bagger. I don't enjoy it. It freaks me out. I get too anxious. Um, so I think if I had to buy just one, like if you threw a bunch of money at me and said, go buy a bike, I'd probably get either a standard low rider eh, I'd probably get a street bob or a low rider S. Uh, depending on what motor I wanted, it would likely end up getting a T-Sport or a DXT fairing on it, maybe some bags. I like my thrashing escapes, but I could use something bigger like a Leather Pro. Uh, it would absolutely get a Pro Pipe. It would probably get our X. Yeah, now that I've talked myself through this, I would get a soft tail. Sorry, that was a long way to get to that answer. <laughs> uh, Tracy Tattoo on Facebook says, best FP3 map for 19 M8 jackpot header, no cat. Four inch with DBX baffle VH VO2 blade. Uh, for that setup, I would run Vance and Hines Power Duels with Eliminator 400s. Now, the DBX baffle is going to be a larger diameter baffle than what we ship, I believe, in that pipe. 
Um, but honestly, it shouldn't be that different. It should be pretty much spot on. It's going to be louver cord. It's going to be within about a quarter inch diameter to one another. And so the reality is, is they will likely have very similar volumetric efficiency table needs. So I would run power duels with uh, Eliminator 400 slip on map, and that should take care of you there, Tracy. I'm going to scroll through Instagram. Before I do that, I'm going to jump back over here. Uh, <laughs> what does Brian do for fun? Asks our photographer. Thanks, buddy. Um, these days, I don't really go anywhere. <laughs> Typically, it's uh, it's going camping, going hiking, getting out of the house, taking the kids to the beach. Uh, when theme parks were open, we used to do that a lot. So, like, we have season passes, or we have season passes. They're on pause right now to Universal, so we would take the kids to like go to Universal for a morning. Uh, before that, we would take them to, like Disneyland to do the same thing. We'd get there early morning, bail at like noon, have lunch, and go get there before the traffic uh, or crowds get too heavy. Uh, yeah, I got two vacations coming up, which I'm excited about. I'm going to Tahoe, and then I'm going camping in July. So that is what Brian's doing for fun in the near future. Uh, yeah. All right. So no baffles on short shots. Will that make the motor run lean? I covered that a little bit earlier, but the answer is potentially yes. To a level it does excessive damage. Probably not. Should you remap it anyway? Yeah. Hey, you speak fast. I do. <laughs> J underscore underscore B underscore 313. Are you giving me time to talk to you? Yeah, buddy. Ask some questions. I got you. Problems from Iraq. That's not a problem. Just, you know, if you have a question, throw it out there. We'll get to you. Awesome. Thanks, says Tracy. Cool. Glad we can get that sorted. Uh, let's see here. D&D Billet Cat map for 17 Street Glide special coming soon. I don't think we have plans on buying that exhaust and mapping it. So more than likely, if it were me and I were running that setup, I would go Pro Pipe Competition Baffle Map there, Biker Professor. And that should get you the 95, 98% of the way there. Worst case scenario, you run a couple shorter auto-tune sessions, two to three, like 20, 30 minute sessions. And then you should be right as rain. Uh, Rohit underscore 45 says, I need a job in your company, sad face. Winky face, sad face. Or make me rich. Um, don't know if working here is going to make you rich, but it's a fun gig and, uh, I, I wouldn't want to do anything else. Uh, that being said, if you go to our careers page, we are hiring for a number of roles. Uh, anybody, a marketing manager, want to work for Vance and Hines, marketing manager, anybody, uh, if you go to, I think it's careers.vanceandhines.com or if you're the main vanceandhines.com page, go all the way to the bottom. You'll see a little button that says careers, click that. And it's a list of everything that we are currently hiring for. Uh, one of which would be my boss. So anyone wants to be a marketing manager and make me do weird stuff. There you go. Where am I from? I'm from LA, dude. All right. So last question I've got over here. And then we're done with the Instagram stories questions. Wow, that really blows out the camera on Instagram. When will the 2021 fitness be available for every three? Again, we covered that a little bit earlier right now. I don't know. We're working really hard on it uh, pretty much all day, every day for electronics. And I pounce in to help uh, when needed as much as they'll, <laughs> as much as they need me. Um, right now, my my day, my whole full plan for today is I got a couple things going on. I'm doing this thing with you guys. I got a meeting. Uh, I'm going to be filming a video with Matthew talking about the different baffle options that we're going to have for uh, short shot stagger. So we're going to do standard baffle, quiet baffle, super quiet baffle, which would be cool. And then after that, I'm heading to the dealer to help out electronics. We need to get uh, some stuff taken care of there. And then I'll come back and hopefully help out with 2021 stuff. So yeah, cool deal. Uh, don't know when it's coming. I just know that we're all kind of working our tails off to make it happen. Gender Scorpy, you're my bro. Can you help me? Dude, yeah, just ask a question. Don't apologize for the inconvenience. Thank you. Go ahead. Ask away, man. Uh, Dewey underscore did it from YouTube says I'm needing help uh, with a piece of pipes specs on my 304 SSHO two to one needing a foot of the header collector pipe to extend it. <laughs> so you're going to take a two to one and stretch it and turn it into a pro pipe kind of that'll be cool. Um, yeah, contact help and Talk to our support staff. I don't know if they can get you that raw pipe, I think, I mean, let's put it this way, we can get you a straight piece of that pipe. I don't know what it's going to cost. I don't know what length you need, but I don't see why we couldn't accommodate that. So yeah, hit them up, help science.com, see what they'll do for you. 
And uh, yeah, go from there, dude. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Any news on the EPA consent decree HD warranty void issue? Not that I know of. Um, if you need to take it to the dealer, flashback stock, unplug your thing, take it in. Got an exhaust question or suggestion for 983. I'm looking at the short shots. I like the short shots a lot. We're actually going to be out of part here. So we're actually going to be doing a short shots install video. Um, we are currently unloading a bunch of motorcycles. We're kind of updating the fleet for rallies. We're getting a whole bunch of 2021 bikes. Um, so one of the soon to be make it yours episodes is going to be short shots staggered, uh, VO2 blade and contrast and an FP3 on a 2021 Sportster. So that'll be cool. Um, so I really like the short shots staggered. I think as far as Looks and price, they're pretty much impossible to beat as far as like sound is concerned. Um, if you want to like upgrade a little bit from Short Shot Staggered, I really like the mini grenades. I think if it were me personally, I'd get mini grenades before I bought Short Shot Staggered. Um, but I just feel like they're a little bit more, it's a bit more polished to them, right? They have a CNC billet end cap. Uh, they have the stepped muffler, which we're pretty famous for. And we've used on a few race bikes now. So it sort of has that feel and that heritage and that little bit of extra polish that Short Shots don't have to me. So I would spend a little bit extra and get, uh, get the mini grenades if you're kind of looking at something in that range. Oh, uh, Jesus. Do we make true duels for an 89 Heritage Softail? Motor. We might, actually. Um, we offer the Softail duels, which basically have the rear header come out in the back over the starter motor, down the side of the primary, out the left-hand side of the bike. So we do offer a system called the Softail duels. I want to say it fits 86 to 17. Don't quote me on that. But I think it fits. I think it'll fit your 89 Evo Sport, or Evo Softail. So Softail Duels, uh, I want to say 86 to 17. John R. Gray from Facebook says, thanks for recent custom map. Shane sent. Yeah, Shane's killer. Uh, runs great. Uh, TW222 and a 103 with a decadded stock HD head pipes. Will auto-tune improve? Maybe. Um, for the most part, if Shane sent it and it's running great, I, I wouldn't personally feel the need to tweak with it. Um, if you do, what my recommendation would be, would be depending on if you're an Android or an iPhone user, I would copy that map that Shane sent into a new map slot, and then I would auto-tune the new map slot. So that way you keep the one that Shane sent as pristine as possible, since he said it runs great, like, don't mess with it. Keep it the way it is, copy it to a new slot, and then run the auto-tune off of that slot. Um, again, I'd run shorter sessions, two to three, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, Flash it, see if it's better. If you like it better, keep it. If not, then you always have that old map to revert back to. All righty. I am out over here on Instagram. We'll just keep rolling. Uh, Dewey's back again. Let's see. Wish we still made the big radius two to one. Yeah, that was a cool pipe, but they didn't sell too well towards the end there. So we had to discontinue it, unfortunately. Uh, got our luck to get a new one from eBay for the 16 soft Soft Deluxe. A lot of folks like it, but I can't get it anymore. Yeah, so this is what I, I say. Like, discontinued parts, sometimes they're still out there just floating around. Um, a lot of times it's worth it to check eBay to see if you can find that kind of thing. Uh, I think I've talked to a few people recently who are looking for, like, high output grenades. Again, discontinued for a couple of years now. And he was able to find a new set for his Dyna on uh, eBay. So luckily that can happen. You guys can get lucky and find those older parts. Um, again, I was able to find, you know, my pro pipe HS from some dude who had it like in the back of a shop and it hadn't been used well once. So definitely a good thing here. Hey, it's Paul. Hey buddy. Uh, I said he's using a stock cam. The FP3 maps I used were developed by me in VNH Dino cells using same components on the VNH testing bike and Hooligan race bikes. Uh, it's as good as it can get short of having 18 millimeter bungs welded in and a whole bunch of dino cell time with Mark here at Ben's V twin. Thank you. Uh, the maps Brian built are outstanding. Thank you, Paul. Really appreciate you tuning in and for the kind words. Uh, yeah, anytime anyone's got a, an air cleaner, high flow air cleaner on a street rod, just hit me up. I've got some maps. We'll send them your way since we never made a VO2 for the street rod. Uh, I know there are other competitors who have. And as a result, I still have some maps from those prototype uh, systems. So yeah, need maps um, and it's not in the FB3. Email me at fppro@advancednights.com. You'll be all our support staff at healthadvancednights.com. We probably have something lying around. It's just not in the map. 
uh it's underscore matthew what was your first bike did you have any previous experience on a bike before or your first bike my first bike i bought barely used i think it had like 400 miles on it it was a 2003 shadow vt 600 cd honda little vlx uh i had zero experience in motorcycling my parents never rode i had an aunt and uncle that rode like back in the 80s but that was about it um i read a couple books and then I taught myself how to ride a motorcycle in the parking lot of my very seedy uh, studio apartment across from ASU. So no, no previous experience, no one in my family rode. Uh, just wanted it, bought a bike, had it towed back home, and I figured it out. Um, I did obviously have, you know, experience driving stick shift and manual cars, because I think I've only owned manuals up until recently. Um, yeah, it's not that big a deal. It's just, you know, muscle memory you figure it out and it's not that bad however that being said i think the way i did it was stupid <laughs> and, and i think a better way and a way that i tend to point people to is if you've never been on a bike and you're looking to get your first bike go take an msf course do the class do the on-road instruction get your permit the nice thing about passing that msf course is they get you a piece of paper you take the piece of paper to the dmv and boom you got your license done deal you also get instructor time in the classroom as far as going over like general safety and best practices. And then you get some actual like seat time with people who can critique you and give you, you know, constructive criticism to help make you a better and safer writer. I've honestly been meaning to do a more intermediate or advanced class, um, but I haven't done it. I really should, considering I've been on a bike for, God, 17 years? Yeah, 17, 18 years, something like that. Getting old, man. Uh, do y'all saw the Drake Black VO2 cover on its own? We do not. We canceled and discontinued the Drac. Uh, it is no longer available. Hi, Beam Tommy. Good morning, buddy. Don't apologize for being late. Just glad you tuned in. How does the SNF stealth compare to the VO2? Well, one's made of laser cut steel and has a machined billet venturi. And the other is made of plastic, and ours is made of metal. Uh, performance is a little bit better on ours. We have more surface area for the filters, uh, particularly if you go with like a Rogue Blade X Cage Fighter. Um, hands down, ours is ours is just a more substantially made product. All righty. See, my buddy's dad also rides, so I'll be taking the MSF course and Hall's help me practice. Much better, way better than I did. My hair. Yeah, dude, right? So you were one of these for a year. My beard has developed this little lip. So my options are to trim my beard to almost nothing or just to suck it up and live with it. So for now, I suck it up and live with it. Anyway, <laughs> thanks guys for tuning in on another Fuel Pack Friday. We've been going for almost 15 minutes. I got a meeting to run off to. And I've noticed that the, oh, nope, 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 nope. High Beam Tommy's got something. Uh, one intake would I recommend as far as matching the look of the competition two to one. I would look at the Cage Fighter. I don't, don't have one in here. Yeah, so Cage Fighter. Um, that one is a laser cut stamped piece of stainless steel with the same brushed finish as a competition two into one. And that is if you got the stainless. If you went with a black competition two to one, we now offer the cage fighter in black. So a stainless steel stamped with a laser engraved emblem in a black. So really, really nice. Dope. Yeah, check those out, dude, cage fighter. Uh, and again, thanks everybody for joining me on another Fuel Pack Friday. And uh, we'll be here at the same time. We'll catch you next week. Bye everyone.